Hello there, welcome back. This is a bit of a change, this video, because this is hopefully going to be an evening rise video. It's just after 8pm on the 20th, I think, 19th or 20th of May. I'm not very good with dates. And I've just seen a couple of mayflies floating around my place, probably would have hatched out of my pond. So I thought I'd come down the river and hopefully catch a few fish on the mayfly took the liberty of attaching the fly in the house before I came down that's it there it's quite a big fly probably on a size 10 short shank but that is about the size of a real mayfly if I can find any mayfly floating around I'll try and catch one and let you see them but if you've done any sort of river fishing you will be familiar with mayflies especially if you're a dry fly fisherman. And believe it or not, when you're using the mayfly pattern, and it's a dry one with the big wings, it catches a lot of air, so it's actually more difficult to cast at distance. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to go for that one, but I'm gonna fish this pool down, which I normally don't do, but in this case, further downstream to fish up would be a nightmare cast. This cast is pretty good, pretty clear behind me. That was an opportunist one. It's not the fish I was going for. Oh, it's absolutely hammered that. Came out very easily though, a barbless hook. It's a lovely little wild brownie. Very nice. Big belly on him as well. He's been feeding heavy. Let's put him back. Hopefully that commotion won't have scared the bigger fish off because that's the one I'm going to go for now. <laughs> Another little one from this time in front of that rock. Just saw it rise and dropped it on, bang, straight away. I think the big lad's been scared off. I didn't see it rise again. Unless it rises whilst I'm playing this little lad, this might be my last fish from this pool. A week ago, that big fly would never have worked for that fella. But during mayfly season, they become so greedy. If you put the fly on them right, they will take it. Oh, there he goes. As I say, a week ago, if I'd put that big mayfly on, the fish would have just looked at it coming over it and just said, aye, we've got an amateur on the water here. Now, they're not so sure. I might as well just give you a little note on the line that I'm using. That is, what attaches the fly to my actual fly line. It is Drennan double strength four pound nylon. Or is it fluorocarbon? I cannot remember. I've had it so long. It's four pound line anyway. Double strength, so it's very, very thin. That allows me to cast tiny flies very, very neatly. It's certainly strong enough for anything I'm gonna catch in this river. I don't use a braided leader or anything like that. Simply just put a little loop in the end of my fly line and tie the Drennan double strength to that and then straight to the fly. It's looking a bit worse for wear but it'll catch another fish I'm sure. Ah, I've only seen one fish rise and it's downstream underneath an overhanging tree which to be honest you would have to be pretty good with a spinning rod to actually get to. I'll give it a go with a fly rod though. Not expecting too much from this one. Oh, now the branches over there are approximately between three feet and two feet off the water surface. And I've got about nine feet to go underneath them to actually get to where the fish is rising. Which is extremely difficult.
just drop the whole lot into the trees. That's a full on tangle. Believe it or not, I snapped a little branch on four pound nylon and I got my fly back. Here's a tip. I can't remember the last time I've actually lost a fly in the tree. You put it into the tree, don't just yark it out straight away. Just gently pull it. And even if it's wrapped around a few times around the branch, nine times out of ten the hook doesn't stick in the branch. The line will just come up, the fly will go around the branch and drop back out into the river. Now because of the back cast, this one might be asking for trouble, but I've only caught two fish, it's not going to make much of a video. I'm going to try and get at least one or two more. We've got rocks sticking out the river, we've got submerged rocks under the river. The drag on this is going to be awful. But hopefully I can get an accurate enough cast just on top of a fish so it'll take it before the fly starts to drag. That took some getting. Another tiny little brownie going back. There's actually very few fish rising. The air temperature is very, very cold today. I don't think it got above 13 degrees. So mid afternoon, we probably would have had a bit of a hatch of mayfly. And then nothing. I've never seen one since I've been down here. Which is a bit of a bummer. But they've obviously been on the river because the fish are absolutely pounding my mayfly pattern when I put it over them right. Some are ignoring it, but we did manage to catch a few. That's three so far. I've got about a 400 yard stretch to walk down now. It's a very flat, boring stretch. But if I see any reasonable fish rise, I will put a fly over them. Hopefully it won't be too dark to film. Now I mentioned before about the daytime uh, air temperature it was about 13 degrees. Now it's probably near seven or eight. It is very, very nippy. There's a really cold breeze on the back of my neck. But there's still a few fish rising. I'm at the very bottom of that pool now. It's the longest, slowest, most boring part of the River Derwent, as far as I'm concerned. But there is a few fish rising that don't look very big, but they might just want a mayfly. As you know, the problem with fishing a long, slow, boring stretch is that the fish could be anywhere. They might rise here, move six to eight feet away, rise again. It's not like a normal pool where fish would get tucked in behind rocks or they'd be in a feeding lane. They do move about in the slow or almost non-moving water. That makes them more difficult to locate. So it's just a question of hit and hope really, just chuck a fly out in a likely looking spot or be lucky enough to be able to drop one just on one's nose just after it's risen. So at least you're in the ballpark of where it is and hope that it might rise for your fly. if you find just watching a fly slowly drift down a really slow moving river too boring like I do 
Well, was cast it out and just gradually twitch it back as if the fly is trying to get away from the water. You know, as if it's crash landed and it's trying to get out. Little twitch, leave it. A little twitch, leave it again. A little twitch, leave it again. That can sometimes attract fish from further away than if you just let it float down static. This is such a goddamn boring way of fishing. I don't like the still water. But, there's still fish in the still water. Very boring way of catching them though. Well, I might not have liked the pool that I caught this fella from, but he's a real beauty. Look at that. Hopefully you can see all the red spots on him. Lovely wild brownie. Oh. Determined to be free, so he's gonna be. Fast water, slow water, it doesn't really matter. If you've got the right fly on and you put it in the right place, you will catch fish. Flies about knackered, but it was still floating. And it's only had one application of gink as well. And that was at home. It's caught four fish, I think. And it still floats. That just proves how good the gink is. Excellent stuff. I don't think I'm gonna have anywhere more to fish because, although it might not look it, it certainly doesn't look it on the viewfinder. It's pretty much dark now. <laughs> no, no rising. Um, but really, I think if there was something rising, it'd be too dark for me to see anyway. I can't see where I'm casting to, can't see the fly on the water. So I think I'll call this one a day. Well, I might not have liked the pool that I caught this fella from, but he's an absolute beauty. Look at that.